Hello everyone, hopefully I'm on screen now and welcome to this, uh, I think this is my fourth YouTube Live um, and today you've probably seen the title, I wanted to talk about what to do if you've run out of butter and this might seem really trivial but for some of us this kind of thing can become quite serious so one, it's just the panic and having to change from things that we're used to when at a time when things are really difficult for all of us, including me. Uh, two, if you, like me, look after someone with dementia or some other vulnerability, that means that things like butter and being able to make a sandwich that's familiar to someone who's vulnerable is actually really important. So it may be you're out there and you're caring for a child who's a kind of picky eater. It may be that you're looking after someone with a developmental delay or someone with dementia or some other vulnerability where sandwiches can become quite a big thing and what we don't want to do is get into a panic about butter. So so I wanted to give all of you just a few quick ideas and if you're already plant-based or you're dairy free you've probably got lots more ideas on this than me so if you have please join in with this kind of help for everyone and add any ideas that you've got to the comments below that would be really lovely if you can do that so let me start then with my first few tips which might be obvious but just in case they're not because we don't always think of these things so if it's all about sandwiches and you're out of butter you can think about using I'm going to show you some props here you can think about using some mayo so mayo is a good alternative for making sandwiches especially if you're making things in advance so say you're making um, a lettuce sandwich and you don't want it to go soggy some kind of salad uh, the mayo has got a lot of fat in it and that will create that barrier that butter does to kind of stop things going really soggy and similarly things like cream cheese if you eat cream cheese you can also use that in a thin layer instead of butter and if you do it thinly um, hopefully your person won't notice and if you like cream cheese of course it's a really nice taste so it can make a change and um, other things to think of is, is using um, nut butters. So um, even if you haven't got peanut butter or cashew butter or almond butter in, and if you do get a chance to get some of these, they are shelf stable, so they're quite a good thing to have in your cupboard. Um, but if not, if you happen to have some nuts in, it's very, very easy to make peanut butter or cashew butter if you've got a blender. And I'll find some links and put them below this video in case you've never done that before. So sometimes for me, I like to just buy and bulk a load of nuts and make my own nut butters when I want them, rather than um, buying in the kind of, they because they often and have lots of sugar and other stuff in there and really peanut butter it should only just be peanuts and then add some salt if you want some um, so that's some kind of ideas and then some other ways that we might use butter and stuff or maybe you've got some butter in but you you're feeling like well I haven't got very much and with the lockdown now in the UK and across many areas of the world uh, it's not a bad idea to adapt that sense of scarcity I was talking about in the eking out the meat video and saving butter if you really like it for the things that really matter to you and then for other things substituting other forms where you can. So one thing that you can do is to um, think about if you've got coconut milk in, let's see, oh, I can't get this in the camera. There it is, coconut milk. Um, if you've got some coconut milk and often a good coconut milk when you open it has kind of separated out and it's a kind of clod of fat in one area of the tin and then the liquid is separated and you might find that a bit sort of ooh, but actually that kind of coconut milk is your friend in this situation because if you're making up a Thai curry or an Indian curry or anything really and you've opened up your coconut milk you can use that fatty element the solid element as an oil and that's traditionally what's done in a lot of cultures so you can just take a spoonful out of the quite solid stuff on the top and and melt that down to do your onions and your garlic and your ginger and whatever you're putting into whatever you're making you can use that instead of oil and save things like butter or other oils you're trying to preserve and let me see what else is on my list 
Oh, another thing is if you're someone who has eggs on toast, and eggs on toast is not going to be the same without butter, I know. Um, but what you can do is if you're having a poached egg on toast is to get your poached egg on there when the toast is still hot and cut into the yolk and the yolk itself is primarily fat so again you can sort of spread that across your toast and it will get your toast nice and moist and kids like that um, especially so that if, you've, if you're out of butter or you want to save it try doing that instead another idea and then the final idea I wanted to give you is that some of you, like me, might have a bread maker at home. Um, and generally, in a lot of bread maker recipes, they do include a bit of butter. And so if you've managed to get in some flour, which is not easy, and you've got your yeast and you've got your other ingredients, it could be that you haven't got any butter and that must be really frustrating. But I have good news. You don't have to use butter in the bread maker recipes you can use oil so um, I always have quite a lot of um, oil in I've got rapeseed oil here that we use a lot you can use any oil instead of the butter um, the oil, as long as you use it in the same proportion now olive oils tend to be quite highly flavoured so if you ever eat something called ciabatta you'll know it's got that distinct kind of olive oil flavour so if you have an option I wouldn't use olive oil I'd use one that's less flavoured so maybe a sunflower oil, a rapeseed oil, avocado oil um, but ultimately if you are needing to make bread and especially if you're in those circumstances I mentioned at the beginning where you, you, it's really important that you have bread or there will be some kind of family crisis or someone not wanting to eat um, then just use any any oil and the what you need to do is that for instance I've got my um, bread machine oops sorry about the noise I've got my um, bread machine manual here and we often make this loaf that's called a honey and sunflower loaf and in this one, it suggests that you should have 25 grams or one ounce of butter. And if you don't put that in, the, the mix will be extremely dry and not come out very well. But instead of using that 25 grams of butter, you can use 25 mils of oil instead. So it's, it's roughly similar in terms of kind of recipes. You can translate over from ounces and grams over to from grams to mils so if it's 15 mils if it's 15 grams of butter it's 15 mils of an oil that you're using and if you've got a little measuring jug then that's quite easy to do but if not the, the way to measure it is to use a spoons tablespoons so a tablespoon is 15 mils so if you've got you need a kind of proper tablespoon like this one it's quite a deep tablespoon um, and that will give you 15 mils or if you've got a kind of dessert spoon sort of soup spoon that's about 10 mils and then a teaspoon which I haven't got here but I'm sure you know what one of those is is about 5 mils so between the tablespoon which is 15 mils the dessert spoon which is 10 mils or the teaspoon which is 5 mils you can use that to measure out the oil and put the equivalent amount of what they were asking you to put in as butter into your bread machine and actually it's really nice it's a really great way of changing up the butter reducing the amount of butter that you eat and it's really nice with oil um, we, we do that kind of generally as a rule now so I've got loads of oil in the cupboard for that purpose. Uh, oil's probably still relatively easy to get I hope on supermarket shelves so um, nice and shelf stable in case you do run out of butter. So that's it, that's my tips for today. Um, I hope that you're all all right out there. In the UK we were uh, given a message of a kind of com more complete lockdown yesterday, last night. And I know for me it sent me a, a bit wobbly. So sending kind thoughts out to all of you out there. And we're all staying in. We're all making the best of this. And we are in it together. So take care of you and take care of the family and friends that are around you. And learn to use video because it's very connecting. Uh, so this is a good time to get connected 
highlighted on video, you will find after you've got over the awkwardness that you feel closer to people when you've actually seen their face. So a handy tip there that's nothing to do with butter, but everything to do with us all getting through all of this in these difficult times. So I'll be back again soon with another live. If you've got any ideas, please put them below. Any questions that I might be able to help with. Um, I have got a degree in nutrition as well as being a mindfulness teacher and a gardener and social worker and all kinds of things. So if there's something you think I can help you with at this time, please just ask a question or go over to the website and join the email list. Okay, thank you all. Take care of you and happy, uh, what day is it? Tuesday? <laughs> okay, thanks. Bye.